we went up to Burma to Undo in, um, it must have been 49, 50, like that. But see, they were very isolated. You know, we got all of our mail from the river. The river boats brought the mail up. The mail landed at the, air, the, the um, port, and then it came up by river. And so it was a slow process of anything civilized happening. I mean, it, by the time it hit us, it was very old. And if anything went wrong in the river, no mail. And it's kind of interesting, as I'm reading my letters, it says, well, the boat is going to go south today, so I better get a letter off to you. So, you know, if, if the boat didn't go, you didn't get any mail. If the boat came, you got mail. And so that was, you know, kind of, it was very primitive living, let me say. My parents were about to go to furlough, and so we bought their refrigerator, so we'd have a refrigerator because they could afford their second-hand one. And it was an Electrolux, but it was the kind that uh, you put kerosene in a big tank at the bottom and light it, and the kerosene works, and you have ice up top. And uh, so we were sent up to Ondo, where Dad Hare used to be. And of course, it's way off in the boonies, and nobody has seen anything civilized at all. The idea of a refrigerator was unusual. Most of them had never seen ice. Where would you see ice in the tropics? And so. I had a couple of students that worked in my house that helped me, and they spread the word. You know, we were working in this house, and you know, she has the strangest machine. She lights a fire underneath it, and after a while, up top come these hard lumps of ice. And we don't know how it happens, how fire can make ice, but this happens. Well, word spread. And so I used, my mother taught me how to make ice cream in the refrigerator, which is a trick. But anyway, I made ice cream, and I began to serve it to some of our faculty. Well, they wanted it so much, they kept wanting it and wanting it, I simply couldn't afford to keep on making ice cream and buying milk. And so I said, okay, you know, I'll do it, but you have to have a line so I know whose turn it is next, and I'll charge you what the milk costs. So I began to have an ice cream. And people would come from 100 or more miles away because they had heard these funny people, they have a machine and I don't know how they do it, but they light a fire underneath it, and out comes frozen, icy stuff. And everybody wanted ice cream, so I had a long line of people. They would take their turn, because otherwise the same guys would get it and somebody else wouldn't. So we became the people that had ice cream, which is something unusual. And you know, it, it, it made a lot of, because when they came, they'd often come on a day they go to church or whatever. They got all kinds of good ideas. So it wasn't just serving ice cream. And, and I sold it at the price that the milk cost. I didn't charge them for any other stuff. So they were very pleased. But I was very famous in that area. <laughs> the lady who can light, light a fire and make ice. You know, it is kind of, if you thought of that in the Middle Ages, they'd have thought you were lying. That doesn't happen, you can't do that. We didn't have telephone, we didn't have telegraph. None of those wonderful things. And we sure didn't have little iPods and all of those things. <laughs>